Hello, uh, today is the birthday of Sir Colin St. John Wilson, and we'll talk about him. Happy birthday, Mr. Wilson. Uh, this was the man, uh, the British architect, quite a good architect. Uh, and a serious architect and a sensitive architect, Sir Colin Alexander St. John Wilson, uh, born March 14th, was an English architect, lecturer, and author. He spent over 30 years progressing the project to build a new British library in London, originally planned to be built in Bl Bl Bloomsbury and now completed near King's Cross. Uh, Wilson was born in, in that place, the younger son of Henry, Henry Wilson, a Church of England clergyman who became Bishop of Chelsmouth for anyway, it's a long text. His father was known as the Red Bishop. Very interesting, Red Bishop. I like this very much. As a result of his sympathy for the Republican cause in the Spanish Civil War, Wilson was educated at Felstead School and he studied history and then architecture at Corpus Christi College in Cambridge from 1940 to 1942, when he joined the Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve. He served as a lieutenant in a commission. My God, it's such a long text. He completed his study under Sir Albert Richardson at the Bartlett School of Architecture at University College in London, graduating as an architect in 1949. This beautiful, beautiful school of architecture, Bartlett. After graduating, he worked in London. Uh, he worked for uh, Sir uh, Leslie Martin alongside James Sterling, Allison and Peter Smithson, um, Alan Cochun, uh, Colquhoun, Peter Carter, and anyway, it's a long text. His designs of this period include the Le Corbusier inspired, uh, inspired Bentham Road estate. Wilson was involved with the independent group of artists at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London and he contributed, contributed to the seminar, this is tomorrow. And let's all of us say the same thing, this is tomorrow, exhibition at the Whitechapel Art Gallery in 1956. He became a lecturer at Cambridge. Uh, Wilson met Finnish architect Alvar Aalto through Martin, uh, a person we just uh, uh, mentioned, and he had Indeed, Alvarado had a major impact on the on the on on uh, on uh, uh, Mr. Wilson. He was a fellow at Church, uh, Churchill College in Cambridge. He retired from teaching in 1969 to concentrate on his architectural practice. God, this is just too long. This text. Uh, Exactly now, when I'm in a hurry <laughs> to 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 uh, to record this uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, there was an influence, especially from Aldo Rossi, an extension to the School of Architecture he did in Cambridge, a house for a painter. Uh, what else did he do? Libraries. Wilson designed his own home in Cambridge. He was commissioned to design the proposed Liverpool Civic and Social Center, but the building was never finished, being de deemed fascist by the council. He also designed an extension for the British Museum, which was also never realized. The most significant influence on Wilson was the Finnish architect Alvar Aalto, who, though a modernist, did not always follow the modernist ortho orthodoxies, that were current at any given time. In a famous speech to the Royal Institute of British Architects in 1957, Alto said, quoted by various writers with minor differences, the architectural revolution, like all revolutions, begins with enthusiasm and ends with some sort of dictatorship. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of true. Wilson embraced this line of thought and developed it further in one of his best known books, The Other Tradition of Modern Architecture, The Uncompleted Project, 1995. This is, uh, this is him in, in, uh, as a statue, as a sculpture, a Bentham Road estate in Hackney, uh, an apartment building, and it's not bad uh, at all, actually. I like this architect. Is very different from Marco Casagrande, of course, but uh, but uh, considering life as it is, not as we wish it is, 
uh, it's not a bad building and you can feel the influence of, uh, of Le Corbusier. And I love the cars too, showing the, the time when the building was built. The building is so modern compared to the, to the, to the cars. It's a, in a way, it's a smaller unité d'habitation uh, built in, in, in Great Britain. They actually built two, I see. Harvey Court at Caius College, Cambridge. So they are dormitories. Not bad, monumental, but still sensitive. Sir Collins and John Wilson. And the brick, as always, does the job in terms of warming up architecture, even when it's very regular otherwise, in terms of conception. Extension to the School of Architecture in Cambridge, the ornamentation, the, the, the aleatory ornamentation of various types of bricks. House for a painter, for the painter Christopher Conford in Cambridge. I like this house very much. Both from the inside and the outside. It's romantic, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's both uh, assertive and modest, I would say which is not easy to do, but he did it. I think the architecture is better than the artworks. It's an excellent building, really, this, this house. Law, English, and Statistical Libraries, also at Oxford. Institutional buildings, maybe not uh, sufficiently provocative, but you have to understand, you know, for an established university here, we, we do not see the Ruin Academy of Casa Grande, but uh, we see a functioning building done with uh, rigor and uh, sense. If it is common sense, I don't know, uh, maybe. His own home in Cambridge, uh, here it is. Interesting uh, sculpture. I'm rushing to arrive at that library, which I think is an excellent building. And we, we see the influence of Alvar Alto on, on, on his work in, in, in the best uh, possible sense. The British Library, yes, this one, the British Library in London. It's, it's a, it was a massive undertaking, uh, you know, great uh, project, a large project. And I think uh, the, the result is excellent. It's not an, it's not a, I mean, it's, it has a certain level of uh, romantic spirit. You know, this brick architecture and you feel that the lyrical, um, functionalism of, uh, of uh, Alvar Alto had an influence. It's a very vast uh, building, uh, but again, the, the brick helps in terms of warming up the building. 
there are some spectacular uh, uh, views here, especially in contrast to those uh, Victorian buildings on the right side of this picture. You see, we, we look at uh, harmony through contrast, the Victorian architecture and the modern architecture uh, of uh, Sir uh, Colin St. John Wilson. London, and this is uh, his uh, his great stone, Sir Collins and John Wilson, nineteen twenty two, two thousand seven. The what is written on his uh, gravestone uh, in Latin uh, translates like this: I believe so that I I, I believe so that I may understand. I believe so that I may understand. Interesting. Credo ut intelligam. Alternately, alternate, alternatively spelled credo ut intelligam is Latin for I believe so that I may understand. The relationship between believing, meaning faith, and understanding uh, is uh, here. Uh, presented to us in a rather provocative way. I believe so that I may understand. So I guess believing faith comes first and understanding second. Happy birthday, Sir Colin St. John Wilson. <laughs> 